and welcome to Deeply Rooted. This is your host, Robin Norgren, and I am so glad that you're here. On this podcast, we have conversations and little vignettes about topics including Montessori, creativity, the meaning of life, God, meditation, yoga, vitamins, art. So if that sounds like the type of things that you're interested in, this is the place for you. Because really what it all comes down to is, as spiritual beings, we are longing to live more fully in our human experiences. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today's mantra is try love. Maya Angelou says, love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. Here are my thoughts on this. I love love. Love takes the edge off any decision I am making. Loving others. Being loved. What characteristics do you need to experience in order to feel loved? How can you demonstrate more love to others? How can you invite more self-love into your life? Try love. Here's an idea from the book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. It offers us ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover joy in the everyday. The idea is, repeat your your point of view. Repeat your point of view. One student of mine, Steve Hamilton, noticed an incongruous bench not far from our classroom that he realized no one sits on, quote and unquote. He made a habit of occupying this spot for 15 minutes every day and studying passersby. Lots of perfectly familiar settings would suit. Sit by an office window that you hardly bother to glance through anymore or on your own front porch. The determined repetition of the same view over time will likely reveal something that is not really the same view after all. There's this place um, that I think about quite a lot um, and I had the pleasure of seeing it when I was living in Germany uh, when my husband was deployed and stationed there and I had my Um, then four-year-old daughter with us and it was kind of a pretty isolating time Um, and every day we would go for a walk along this path and we went for a walk along the same path every day for six months and I am so happy that I one time decided to just take a picture of the path. And so when I look at that picture of the path, I immediately think of all (laughs) the mundaneness that we saw together. But I think of all the life that I walked out on that path and it, it makes me feel teary unexpectedly right now to even talk about it. 
um, because here I was on one side of the world and all my friends were here in the United States for the most part. And so while I was awake, they were asleep. And I was just doing life in a country that I was born in, but I really didn't know much about. And I was born there because my dad was in the military. And then here I was walking along a path with my daughter who is there because her dad's in the military. So even in the ordinariness of that, there's a lot of my life that feels like was walked through in, in just doing this one activity every single day on this same path. So I invite you to try something like that or to reflect on a time where you might have done this type of activity in your life and maybe write about how um, it has changed or molded you. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I'd like to talk about what it is like to begin a creative practice and in particular to draw if you have felt very hesitant with your drawing abilities. As some of you may know, if you follow me on my Instagram account, uh, it's under my name, Robin Norgren, I am an art teacher and I have taught art in schools, in workshops, community centers, and also online. And I did not start out as an art teacher. And as a matter of fact, I um, <laughs> I had a lovely series of events where I just kind of hung out my shingle and said I was an art teacher. And, um, you know, that was probably the first understanding of how, um, manifestation works. Um, but in the midst of that, probably my biggest hesitation was to draw. The problem with that is, is that especially when you're teaching children, you really do have to model what uh, you would like them to do. And so if I had hesitant artists in my midst, the last thing that I could do was to be hesitant with my uh, ability to try. And even as I say that, there were times where I would draw in front of them because I, I did that every single time. If I asked them to draw, I would draw on the board or, you know. Um, and um, there are times when I came up with some awful renditions of what I was um, attempting to show them how to draw. And I remember a particular set of kindergartners that were brilliant. But of course, all kindergartners are brilliant. But artistically brilliant as well. And um, they were just, here's two things I noticed. Their work was incredible because, of course, I'm looking there and I can see the rendering that I wanted it, whatever we were drawing to come, you know, together as. And theirs would come, you know, very, come together much closer to the actual item or object that we were drawing. Mine was just like, yep, that's what I'm calling it. It's not what it looks like. But do you know, not one child, not one time said to me, that doesn't look like that. 
right? Oh, if we adults could just get to that place <laughs> where we are not judging ourselves and others so harshly. <sighs> it's a practice. It's definitely a practice. And so what I thought is I would like to take you on a journey just to think about the inner workings of even how to draw and how drawing can be a meditation and can be prayer. So first of all, I wanted to talk to you about some key components behind even when you begin a practice like drawing. And it is adapted from a book that I got from a dear friend called Drawing with Children. But I love the subtitle. It's a creative method for adult beginners too. And it's by a woman named Mona Brooks. Here's what she says about how you, f what you should think about when you're thinking how you feel about your own drawing ability. Here are her words. If you feel confident about your drawing, but want a vehicle to teach others, approach this method. So she comes up with a method for drawing with a fresh and open outlook. If you don't feel confident about your own drawing or your ability to work with children, let me assure you, this will change. The drawings by beginner adults that you see in the color section of the book exemplify the kind of work that was achieved by worried and unconfident beginners. None of these students knew whether they could draw and were surprised at their results. If you want to improve your own drawing and don't intend to teach anyone else, you can simply become your own teacher. How often have you heard someone conclusively state, I can't draw? Is it, it is accepted that only a few are blessed with the gift of drawing and that no excuse is necessary for not being able to draw. You can even hear successful painters, designers, and artistically inclined people make, their, make this type of statement, but with additional embarrassment and frustration. Do you know this attitude can actually change whether you teach it to yourself or you decide to teach it to others? One gentleman shaking and sweating at the beginning of a one-day wor workshop admitted to the group that he was shocked to display such real fear over the idea of possibly being unable to draw. He said he was sorry he had come. He was sure he'd fail. And by the end of the day, he was beaming with pride at his accomplishments and said that if he could draw, anyone could. He couldn't believe I had witnessed this same phenomenon many times. I'll stop right there. But that is exactly what has been my experience with drawing is that really it just takes a kind teacher and a kind voice inside you, where here we come back to kindness, to learn how to draw. And I have found over the years, I am even amazed that I am up at the board even in front of fifth and sixth graders who kind of can be a bit judgy. <laughs> Just ref like pushing, see, noticing the thought like, oh my gosh, I hope you can draw this one <laughs> on the board and doing it every time. Now, would I like to do it a little better? Sometimes, but I feel like the more I have practiced the more I've just gotten used to the idea that this is just my rendition of what it is that I'm drawing. And I, you know, I don't have to tell you this, especially those parents out there. If I don't truly believe that, there's no way that someone who is timid in the room with me will believe it. So anyway, I'm going to start to share some kind of tips and tricks on drawing. Believe it or not, I can do that without um, you even seeing what it is. <laughs> I'm doing. But my plan is I would love to put together a drawing class. So if anyone is interested in doing something like that, feel free to email me at wellofcreations at gmail.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, next up, you will be doing the beloved meditation. <music> Thank you.
This is part three of the meditation, the beloved prayer. I'm going to go over the first two segments and then add the third segment for those of you that have listened to the other two segments or one segment. But I wanted to give you kind of a full body experience of how this prayer would work as a meditation. It is intended to be a 30 minute meditation, but I promise you, it does not have to be 30 minutes. This is something that you can work your way into. A little while back, I was I did a 90 day uh, commitment to meditating and I started at about 15 minutes and I got about as far as I was able to sit in meditation for about 45 minutes. Um, but what I, once I was done with the, um, with the meditation for 90 days, I um, felt like the sweet spot for me was about 20 minutes. And so again, there's no pressure with meditation. I think that sometimes we get hung up on the idea that the amount of time is what um, the priority is, but really it's about choosing, disciplining yourself to just sit still. You know, for all of you teachers out there and my, myself included, we have many a time had, have had to have children sit still. But as an adult, no one's ever really telling you to sit still. And guess what? You lose the ability to do it. So I invite you to just try. All right, so let's start with a review of the other two days, and then I will add on the third day. Sit relaxed and at ease. Have a confidence that God's love will show itself in some way. For the first 10 minutes, without fuss, say the following words slowly and fervently. Jesus, you are the beloved. Repeat the words as necessary. Let your heart fill with nonverbal praise and thanksgiving. Let distractions float by, even when they press upon you. After a while, the distractions will seem less and less urgent as you let them go. Simply be with Jesus in this precious moment. Then, gently and without fanfare, move on to the next 10 minutes. Paul reminds us in Romans 9.25 that we too are destined to become the beloved. Another color is added to the beauty of this scene. Say these words. Jesus, I am the beloved. Let your core being soak up God's favor. At first, the shift might seem jarring, but rest in the depth of prayer and let this truth settle in. Then go on to the next 10 minutes. I used to imagine that part would be a distraction, but I have found it to be a rich, and a holy connection with others. Jesus, we all are the beloved. Let people come into your heart, a neighbor, a friend, a relative, someone you read about in the morning paper. The important thing is not to exclude anyone your heart will bring to the surface the ones you need to give attention to. At the end, simply conclude with a word of thanksgiving or the Lord's Prayer.
Those who've used this prayer speak about a deep healing that takes place within them. If you stay with this form of prayer on a regular basis over a period of time, you will live with a clearer understanding of your place in the universe. Thank you.